or see that guy right there? His name's Phil Gaisley. He, mm -hmm. he works with uh, human trafficking, helping to stop oh. human trafficking. And so he's a, he's a friend of a friend. Mm -hmm. and, and I really want to sit down, take my break, and sit down and, and talk to him because sure. he just came in. So I was uh, uh, wondering, I, I've got, you know, those guys are in the back. You know, uh, Joe and Marcus are in the back. And I don't gotcha. know what they're up to. It's never normally a good thing. Is Marcus actually taping the show right now, his uh, show? I don't know what they're up to, if anything. <laughs> All right. I'll tell you what, don't worry about a thing. Honest, go and enjoy your friend, and okay. I'll take care. Louie and I will cover for Marcus. Okay, well, that's just the thing. I, I, I really don't want you to have to cover for him. Listen, if, if it gets uh. busy, something, just give him a nudge and get him out here so he can, he can help with customers. <laughs> okay, okay? Yeah, sure. I don't care if you had fun. I didn't. And I don't ever want you directing my show again. But I have a really great idea no. for the show. No, no. What do you mean, no? You haven't even heard them yet. And I don't have to hear them. Well, maybe we no. can. No. How about if we. No, no, never. Okay, I gotta go get more stuff for Tim out of the truck. Yes, Jeez. absolutely. Jerry sent you my way. I mean, it, it's really good. Oh, this whole human yeah. trafficking thing is really a hot item right now. There's a lot of people that are getting. You know, starting to do something about it. Mm -hmm. That's true, yeah, definitely. And uh, there's definitely a movement, especially in the United States, but in other parts of the world as well, that's really, really growing a lot right this minute, yeah. So we talk a lot about human trafficking in other places, but the U.S.? Absolutely. I mean, people have this image that slavery... FunFest is your birthday party capital of the world. Our party packages are so much fun and exciting that we call them FunFestic. Let the expert staff at FunFest create a lifelong memory for that special someone in your life. We offer packages for children, teens, and adults. We also specialize in group events ranging from 20 to 300 people. Book your next birthday party or group event today. Call us at 412-828-1100 or reach us online at www.funfestcenter.com. Did you know that 95% of Christian parents do not send their children to Christian schools? One reason parents often give is that they want their kids to be salt and light. A noble idea, but consider that they have the rest of their lives to be salt and light. What they need now is an education where they can learn, think, and learn how to think in an atmosphere where their worldview is supported, not ignored or run down. Give them that and their light will shine. Visit pittsburghchristianschools.net and step up to Christian education. Remember when paying attention to detail was important to building things that last? At Omega Home Improvements, we believe that your siding deserves that same attention to detail so it too is built to last. We specialize in a foam back insulated panel that features five times the energy efficiency and is four and a half feet longer than other panels used on homes today. We're Omega Home Improvements, doing it right from beginning to end. Check it out. New to You Kids features retail clothing for children. Many of our items can be found in high-end boutiques. We provide quality clothing and excellent service and specialize in dressing your children from head to toe for weddings, graduations, holiday wear, and pageants. We recognize that you want your children to look their very best. Therefore, these clothing lines are unique and fashionable. New to You Kids is located at 2405 Sawmill Run Boulevard, Route 51 in Pittsburgh. Everything good? Oh, yes. with the, with the <sighs> uh, it's about 10 years. Oh, really? yeah. Hey, hey, how you doing? My name's hey, Marcus. Nice I'm to Phil. meet you. Good Phil? to meet you. Nice to meet yeah. you. Hey, listen. Yeah. Uh, you need to talk to Louis ASAP. The drive through intercom is broken again, is it? No, it's working perfectly fine. So, what do I need to talk to Louis about? Louis is playing Cut the Ropes on the iPad. Oh, I get mm -hmm. it. He won't let you play, will he? Well, well, no. <laughs> hey, listen. What? No playing games while you're working. You can play games on your break, but not while you're working. You got it? Yeah, I got it. Okay, by the way, have you, have you noticed? Notice what? I'm on my break. Oh. Can you do me a favor? Just Laura's in charge for the next 15 minutes or so while I'm sitting here talking to Phil. Wait on the customers. Listen to Laura, okay? Okay, Dan. Okay. <laughs> 
Life is tough. Life is tough. <laughs> well, how did how did you get involved with the whole human trafficking uh, thing? Well, what happened back in 2000, uh -huh. I was working for a refugee resettlement agency and I was working with refugees. And in that year, the United States government brought in some legislation called the Trafficking Victim Protection Act. Okay. And what that did was made refugee agencies responsible for the case management of some trafficking victims. Oh. So it actually became our job. And that was kind of how I initially got involved in the issue. And then after that, I had another thing happen a few years later. I was in Albania, and I uh, travel there sometimes to train church, new church planters. Yeah. And um, I met one of the students, and she told me a story of how a girl had been trafficked out of her school when she was in high school. And she told me about the corruption that was involved and the horrible story of this person that she knew. Well, there was that, that movie just a, a year or two ago about oh, Taken. Taken, right? It talks about the Albanians <clears throat> right. being involved in human trafficking. Right. Which is very Hollywoodized, yeah. but it was also a good thing in terms of bringing the issue to people's attention. And I was so moved by the story of this girl who was a student in Albania, that also motivated me to look at dealing with human trafficking more on an international level and not just where I'd been focused on the issue in the United well, States with, as well. You're with Youth with a Mission. I, right. I didn't think they did that kind of thing. I thought you guys were all tied in with missions, outreaches around the world. How does human trafficking fit with well, Youth with a Mission? Well, where it fits is because, I mean, I think that there's been a real groundswell within the body of Christ in terms of the connection between evangelism and social justice, where there's been a real connection of how as Christians, a part of our worship, in a sense, is to bring justice, to minister to injustice, and uh, and I think there's been a growing understanding of that, a renewal of that in the church, and as YWAM, we've been involved in mercy ministries for many, many years, and so this is kind of a natural evolution for us as a ministry and how we'd be involved. It's one of those things where, where many times the church is, is focused, and rightly so, in, in evangelism, mm -hmm. sharing the gospel, but, yeah. but you know, the Bible says, listen, if someone is suffering, you can't just ignore right. the suffering of your brother. You've got, to, you've got to help them. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you look at the Gospel of Luke and you see how much the Gospel of Luke focuses on the vulnerable and the marginalized in terms of looking at how we're to be followers of Jesus with that kind of an example. And obviously, modern-day slavery is, you know, we need to be a part of that as the church in terms of putting an end to it as much as we can in this generation. How bad of a problem is it? I mean, once again, saw the movie Taken. Right. I've got my friend, uh, Philip Cameron, is in Moldova, and he works mm -hmm. with trafficking there. Yeah. How bad of a problem is this? Sadly, it's a problem pretty much now in every country in the world. Really? And, uh, yeah, and, uh, and it's um, something that gains massive profits for organized crime, and the current statistics are that there's roughly 27 million slaves in the world at this moment in terms of forced labor and people being forced and used for commercial sex. What was that number again? 27 million. 27 million people yes. that are in slavery yes. right today yeah. in this yeah. modern society. In this modern society, that's correct. And, uh, and so how can we not do something about that? How can we not be stirred to look at the different ways that we can help to make a difference? Now, when, when I think about human slavery, I, I think of sex trafficking, you mm -hmm. know, young girls, young boys mm -hmm. for sexual favors. Is there other types of human trafficking? There uh, are, and they, they're all horrific in different kinds of a way. And one of the things that I personally raise a lot of awareness in is the whole area of labor trafficking, mm -hmm. where there are people that have been lied to about job opportunities, where they're being forced to work for 16 hours a day for no pay with mm -hmm. threats to their life or threats to the life of their family if they seek to run away from that kind of a situation. And, uh, and that is very much uh, alive in the United States, unfortunately. It's a major part of what human trafficking is in the United States. Well, what, what are they told when, when you're saying they're, you know, it's, it's labor trafficking, they're brought uh -huh. into a country being sold as a, as a slave, slave labor of some kind. Mm -hmm. What is it that they're told? I mean, how are they convinced that this is really what they they want to do, that they're going to come over and, and, and work? Uh, how, how are they convinced? It really is through work. And I think the first important thing is that this is something that preys on vulnerable communities. So it's people that are already in a desperate state, situations of poverty, situations of family difficulty. And so it preys on vulnerable people. And so 
the way it works is that people are given job offers that are usually fake. They're told that they can get a social security card if they come to the United States. They're told about the amounts of money that they're going to be earning and because of being vulnerable they're led into situations that then turn out to be not what they were informed of. So this happens really in Western nations, like Absolutely. the United States. Yeah, it like happens in the United Canada. States, happens in, hey, in hey, Canada. Mark, the Mark. Sad thing is you really need to listen to my ideas. I don't want to hear any of your ideas. I have my own ideas. Thank you very much. Listen, my wife is a wonderful cook. She, I mean, she could be like a guest star. And she could even fill in for you, you know, so you could take uh, trips more often. What? And, and my daughter, she could fill in for Sam, and she can't make it. Your daughter. Yeah, and you know what? They could even change the name. The Cooking with Marcus and the Manskis. Mm mm mm. I mean, mm 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 works with Mansky too, right? I mean, it, it's like a new. I can see it now, man. It's like I got you speechless, man. I mean, it's like you don't know what to say. I knew you would love it. It's just a fantastic. Idea, isn't it? Joe? Yeah? You're fired. You can't fire me. You remember who your business partner is? Phil? <sighs> Phil does the hiring, mm -hmm. so he's the only one that could fire. Yeah, and that's another thing I have to deal with, okay? Because I didn't want a business partner, so I'll be dealing with that later as well. Oh, well, whatever. You think about it. I got to take this in the back. Yeah, and uh, also, hey, I don't want any of your ideas, and I don't need your ideas. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Gee. Oh, pardon me. Oh, goodness. Marcus. Yes? Sorry to bother you. No, you don't ever bother me. Listen, listen. It's because of you that I don't know anything about steamers, cappuccinos, <laughs> lattes, anything. And not to embarrass you, but you're the one who inspired me to even make a steamachino. Oh, really? Thanks. That's well, sweet of you. Sure. So, and also, you, you're not, like, concerned and trying to get on my show like everybody else, you know, so. Oh. All right. So, what, what can I do for you? What's up? Um, well, I don't think it's, I don't think I should tell you right now. Oh, it's okay. What is it? Well, Louie wanted me to kind of mention something, an idea he had for your show. Oh, I knew no. it. Told you. Oh, not Bad Lord timing. No. Bad timing. It really happens. You know, we, we, when I think about human trafficking, I think of, of, you know, people being stolen from Western nations and being taken to these developing or third world nations. Mm -hmm. It really happens here in the U.S. and in Canada. Absolutely, and what happens a lot in Western nations, and particularly in the U.S. and Canada, is what we call a debt bondage situation, which is where somebody is actually paying money to come into a country and then being told the money wasn't enough and that they are actually paying money back. Hmm. And so that is a way in which modern-day slavery takes place frequently in the United States. So it's States. one of these things where somebody's in some impoverished country, whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, it could be something like China, it could be something like uh, Bangladesh, Pakistan, whatever, mm -hmm. and they're being told, listen, you know, you, uh, we will get you into the United States. Mm -hmm. We will get you into Canada. Right. Uh, you have to pay this kind of fee, and, mm -hmm. and, and then they're brought in, then they're told, it wasn't enough. Exactly. You've got to, you have to work it out. That's exactly so they it. Get, yeah. They get into some kind of factory as slave yeah. labor. 14 hours a day, and if you try and run away, we know where your family is and we will harm your family. And that is one of the number one forms of human trafficking activity in North America, for sure. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's crazy. Is I, I had heard somewhere, too, that, that sometimes drug traffickers will will steal kids or, or, or traffic kids in, in drugs. Is that something that... Well, it's, it's interconnected because um, this is a very big money maker for organized crime. Um, and so because of that, the industries are connected. Like, we've got 180,000 young people at risk from human trafficking on our streets most nights in the United States. In the United States, 190,000? 180,000. 180,000, Roughly, crazy. and uh, according to Shared Hope International. Uh -huh. And, uh, and that's, a, that's a minimum number. And so this is a horrible situation where many young people have already become vulnerable to drugs and through that vulnerability and then led into sex trade situations because of the vulnerability that's connected through the drug trade. And so that's how, unfortunately, sometimes that can happen. So every day, somebody driving through any major city in mm -hmm. the U.S. can be seeing kids on the street mm -hmm. that are vulnerable to trafficking. Absolutely. And we've discovered that, you know, in many cases, young people that, uh, that are runaways or at-risk use on the streets, that they're vulnerable to traffickers within 48 hours of being on the streets of America. Well, 
with, with all this happening, Phil, mm -hmm. how do we stop it? What, what, what can be done to stop this? It seems enormous. Yeah, and, and it is. It's a, it's a huge task, but we can all make a difference in different ways. And what happens is people ask me all the time, I feel so hopeless. I hear these things, and what can I really do? to make a difference and to put a stop to this thing. And there's a whole bunch of different things that people can do in a practical way through getting out on the streets and getting to know people, through being involved in research, educating people, giving people ideas of how they can identify victims on the street, and also um, how they can connect on an international level, what they can do with advocacy efforts and those kinds of things. And we're also very committed to education in terms of things like the media as well, and also healthcare professionals. That's a big part of this as well so and there's a lot of very good work and good projects going on in these different arenas and um, yeah and we can um, touch on those things in some more detail as well and yeah. see where you Ooh, go with that. but you you talk to you you talk to different law enforcement space, agencies and, and talk to them about his place, his place. Do you know that your morning cup of coffee can help clothe, feed, rescue, and care for the poorest of the poor? I know it may seem hard to believe, but it can happen. His Place and Kiva Han Coffee have joined forces to bring a special blend of coffee that will change the world. Hope Coffee is a direct trade coffee, which means that the families of the people who work hard on the coffee farms receive the funds directly from their harvest. In addition, the profits from Hope Coffee go to help rescue children in impoverished countries and bring the message of God's love to people all around the world. For a limited time, for your gift of $37, we'll send you as our thank you a His Place mug and a 12 ounce bag of Hope Coffee. Together, we're changing the world one life at a time through one cup of coffee at a time. Send your gift today. This year, more than 27,000 children will be diagnosed with a life-threatening medical condition. You are good to go. Through the course of their treatment, many of them will miss school. Many of them will miss spending time with their family and friends. So, have you made your decision yet? Yeah, I think so. And many will simply miss being a kid. Here we go. But you can lift their spirits and give them a special kind of hope. There are thousands of wishes waiting to come true. You can make it happen. Find out how today at wish.org. Hey, look, I was thinking, I don't care if Phil says he's my partner or whatever. Listen, this is my show, and I don't care what he thinks, okay? He's not my business partner, point blank. Well, it doesn't matter if he's your business partner or not. I paid to be a director, and by George, I'm gonna be a director. Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean you paid to be the director? Well, me and Phil, we made a deal. What kind of deal? Well, I deliver all his stuff uh, over shenanigans for free, and he said I could direct your show. That is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard. How could you even let Phil take advantage of you like that? Phil taking advantage of me? Yeah, he surely is. Well, he's taking advantage of you, too. Okay, how do you figure that? Well, what about that? I remember that big uh, uh, YouTube check you had. And, right. and Phil, he, he invested, what, a big $50 on, 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 uh, on your show? And he's going to get a big profit from the bigger checks that you're going to be getting? Well... You know what? And all because you were too cheap and, you know, you, you wanted to save an extra couple of bucks for, you know, cutting him in and letting him be a partnership. You know what? You know, now that you put it that way, you know, you're kind of right. Man, how can I be so stupid? I mean, hey, we, we come from the same part of the cloth, you no, know what I mean? No, no, we're not. I would never wear that kind of shirt. Well, all right. What's this supposed to mean, man? <laughs> These numbers are, you know, they're, they're fantastical. I mean, right. thinking about, you know, 27 million around the world, 180,000 mm -hmm. here in the United States. Yeah. Do you have some personal stories, personal lives that 
that this is yeah. a real situation. Well, and this is what it really comes back to in terms of how it, you know, touches, we can touch people one, you know, one person at a time in terms of how we can make a difference. And a couple of um, situations that really impacted me personally was one where I got a call about an, um, a, a gal that had come from another country to the United States to work for a while. And sadly, um, was instead of being taken to a job that she'd come for, was taken to a house with 13 people inside and was told that she was basically being forced to work in a strip joint. And, um, and this girl was, um, by miracle of God, was able to escape that situation and uh, ended up meeting with myself and a number of others and was able to receive assistance. And, uh, and um, it was really a miraculous thing. I mean in terms of how she got assistance. And mm -hmm. another example would be when we were in Albania. We mm -hmm. came across a gal who was um, 14 years of age. She'd been forced into the sex trade at 12 years old and actually had a, and had a, had a two-year-old son. And, um, and we were able to come alongside her and also her mother and be able to, um, to help and assist her in some of the needs that she had. But, you know, those experiences were two in particular that had a, a major impact on me within the mm -hmm. wider picture how, of the how, work that we do. How do people hear about you, Phil? I, I mean, obviously, when the young woman was in the house of the 13 others and, mm -hmm. and got, you know, kind of sold into being a strip joint, mm -hmm. somebody heard about you or some way and made, made the connection. Do you, do you have like a website or something that... that, that People contact you. Do they? Do you, they contact you through? Why? why how, how do people? How do they know well, to contact? Yeah, you? there's two ways, really. I mean, one of it's word of mouth, and that you know, even though this is very much you know for me a, a Christ-centered thing in right. terms of what I'm doing, um, you we have to partner with government entities, with uh, social service providers, and lots of different organisations in mm -hmm. this. And and one of the things that I've been involved in is helping to start and encourage networks within different states across mm -hmm. the US. And there's a lot of organizations that do this on a much bigger scale than I do. Mm -hmm. but, but one of the things that we did back in 2004 was start a network in Colorado. Mm -hmm. And so some of these stories come from the beginning of that state network of organizations that partner together. Mm -hmm. And one of the great things about the anti-trafficking movement in the US is how much we work together oh, in great. terms of putting a stop to this on both a sacred and a secular level. And that's, um, that's certainly a, a good thing, you know, in terms of seeing an end to this, and so that's one of the ways that they know yeah. about me. In terms of websites, there's two: YWAM City that's Initiative. Me, I'm just saying, I, I can't believe how slick Phil is. I mean, you really need to be on your toes when he's around. Well, you've known him for years, and um, <laughs> he got you good. Yeah, I'll say. Wait, hold on, man. I got a call. I got to take this. Mm. Hello, Mansky here. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. What's up? Okay, no problem. I'll be there in a minute. All right, I'm leaving now. See ya. Sounds like you got an anxious customer. No, nah, that wasn't a customer. Your daughter, your wife? No, that was Sam. I got to go pick her up at the mall. See? See what? That's what I'm saying. If you didn't have to pick up Sam, you would probably never go past the mall, right? You're right, man. She's using me, too. See, man, we're suckers. Uh, uh, always nice guys are suckers, man. They're always the ones getting used. That's us. Nice guy suckers. Man, I can't believe that. What are we going to do? Look, 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 we can't be getting played like this no more. You know what I'm saying? We got, we got to stick up for ourselves. We got, you know what I mean? We got to stick up for That's one right. another, That's man. That's right. No more being used. I got your back. I got your back. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 There, you have a list of five things people can do? Yeah, basically how I talk about the issue is I do it by spelling the word dream because okay. obviously it's a dream that this comes to an end. And the first one is the D is direct services, that there are people in churches and community groups and different faith communities getting involved with at-risk youth, doing prevention in terms of getting out on the streets, getting to know the vulnerable young people in our cities is the number one way that people in general can put a stop to human trafficking in America, I would suggest. The R is research. Through research, we prevent trafficking and raise awareness. I'm doing a research project right now mm -hmm. called the Colorado Project that's specifically focused on research for the prevention of trafficking in the state of Colorado, mm -hmm. and it covers some other areas too. And that's with the Laboratory to Combat Human Trafficking. And their website is called combathumantrafficking.org, and it's oh, a okay. great website for resources. So I wanted to mention that Put to that you as well. Phone. Yeah, Good. you bet. Yep. And then 
There's education and awareness, that's the E. Giving people tips on how to identify victims, making sure they know the national hotline number mm -hmm. and giving information like that. Then there's advocacy, writing letters, making change in the political world, in the corporate world. You can go to a website called thecode.org and tell hotels to stop being used as places for child sexual exploitation, for example. And then the M is media, encouraging artists and people in the media to get involved and to be a loud, loud voice for stopping this. And so, you know, we very much encourage artists, musicians, drama, film, and all of those kinds of arenas as well in terms of how we can put a stop to this. So there's lots of things that people in everyday life can do to be a part of the, the movement movement of stopping well, human trafficking. I'm around. grateful that there's there's a build up of awareness and mm -hmm. more people are Definitely. finding out about it so mm -hmm. so hopefully we can put an end uh, to something like that. Part of part of what I do here with the coffee shop mm -hmm. is I help some of the other organizations that are out there and yeah. so that way with the profits from the coffee oh, shop that's great. And, and sell the coffee and so that's that's mm -hmm. a way that 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 we can help here in this old coffee shop in Pittsburgh. That's awesome. But, but uh, yeah, I, I appreciate what you're... Oh, excuse me, my, my wife is calling. Oh, no uh, problem. Excuse me. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Hi, honey. Yeah. Really? You're kidding. It, it, Stop. Whatever we do, we got to stand strong. That's right. And this time forward. Listen, and not even if Sam gets teary-eyed. That's and, right. And not even if, if Phil comes up and... And waves a big stack of bills in front of your nose, man. That's right. We stand strong. We stand strong saying, together. Stand strong. Right. That's we right. stand strong together, you know, man. No, we don't get fooled no. by nothing. Hey, guys, I, I, can I bother you for a second? Sorry, sorry to interrupt. I, I just got off the phone with Paige. Paige was on her way to bring the dogs here so that I could take them to the vet a little bit later, but she got a flat tire. And and I was wondering if there's any way, Joe, you got the truck. Oh, yeah, and I got a truck, man. No problem. I, I can get right on it. We can go pick the puppies up. Oh, man. Are you sure? They're, I mean, they're, they're six-month-old puppies. And, oh, that'd be and, great. No, I can help, too. I can help, too. I'm, t I'm on my break. Puppies. You don't mind? I don't mean to impose. No, I mean, you're you guys, not imposing, man. Well, I can't wait to do it. We'll do anything for you, Tim. Puppies. Well, it's going, All right, man. guys. Well, well thanks. Come Thank I, I I really appreciate Bye. it. See ya. Wow. That's we must be nuts. They said they were four weeks old or six weeks old. And they used us again. They must be 600 pounds. What did you put, steroids in the kibbles and bits? What is this? Being, I am tired of being used, man. Yeah. They always use us. We can't let this happen again. I'm not getting used one more time. I'm not again. I'm After fine. this, we're done, man. As soon as we walk his dog all the way to the vets, which is about 10 more miles. At least he's fluffy. Oh, like a pillow. So come on. Thank you for tuning into his place. And I do want to make sure that you understand no dogs were harmed in the filming of this episode. Those are really are my dogs. But uh, if, if you really want more information, you can help make a difference with human trafficking. So go to hisplace.tv and you'll have all of Phil's information right there. And uh, you can find out how you can make a difference. We, you can always go to His Place TV as well to put in your reservation to be one of the folks who comes in and gets a great cup of coffee. And we'll see you next time on His Place.